Nick's oh. family, what's popping? It's your boy and it's Chef uh, Zay. If you want to call him that. But Sam, anyway, up, we here, man. We popping. We getting ready to do this thing. Um, of course, we making red pepper basil, basil pizza. Red pepper basil times. pizza. Red pepper basil red. pizza. Red pepper basil pizza. Red. red pepper basil pizza. I'm nice with it. Yeah. I'm nice with it. We making red pepper red. basil pizza today, ladies and gentlemen. And we're going to talk about the Knicks. We're going to start off talking about the Knicks. All right. I want to know from you, Zay, and you look kind of funny with them glasses on. Well, you look funny anyway, I got, but I got that. Uh, hey, first of all, I need the hater blockers. I got the hater blockers on. Yeah. Today. Okay. I mean, you know, if if you didn't let the chat teach you how to cook, you wouldn't need them on. Nah, I gotta take them off now because the haters, the haters are already in here. <laughs> but anyway, look, uh, the Charlotte Hornets are looking to complete a sign and trade with the Boston Celtics, right? And in order to do so, a, a sign and trade for Gordon Haywood, and in order to do so, they need a team to help facilitate to help facilitate the deal. They're trying to get up off of Nicholas Batum's contract. He makes $27 million this year. Uh, they need to move that contract so that they can free up the money to sign Gordon Haywood to $30 million, which is nuts. Because if they don't, let's, they, they can always, you know, they can always wave Nicholas Batum and, uh, you know, and break up his contract over the next three years. But if they do that, that means Gordon Haywood is actually costing them $39 million. Oh, my God. In in essence, that's what that's what they're going to be paying. They're not. He's not getting the entire thirty nine million, but in essence, that's what they'll be paying for him, because they're going to have to pay that extra nine million dollars for Nicholas Batum if they can't get up off of that contract, right? Would you Would you do it? And what will you, in order to get up off the contract, for you? What do you need from Charlotte to get up off that contract? So start off, tell me, would you do it? And if so, what do you need from Charlotte? Shem, Simeon, Simeon Russell. Are you kidding me? Yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. This is what the Knicks need to, Sim, if the Knicks do this, give Leon Rose a statue. This, if he can get, Two first round picks, which I believe he will. He can. It is Michael Jordan. He is the Michael Jordan of worst owners in the league. <laughs> Listen, he made James <laughs> Dolan look like uh like Dr. Bus. But listen, two first round picks. Give me Nicholas Baton. All day, every day, twice on Sunday. Two first round picks. Not unprotected. Listen, I'll be I'll be modest. If you could get one of those, are you going to get one of them unprotected? And if you could get a one that's like, what, top top three, top four protected, you do it. Yes. Sim, yes. Give me a first unprotected, and then give me a one that's protected one to four. Hmm. So this is, this is what they have right now. It's Charlotte Hornets. All right, this is according to TradeNBA.com. And here's their future draft picks. They got their first round draft pick in 2021. Okay. They got a second round draft pick in 2021. Then they have another second round draft pick in 2021 from the Clippers. Right. And well, let me see. One of the second round draft picks is from Brooklyn. The other one is from the Clippers. Right. So they have two second round picks in 2021. In 2022, they have a first round pick. Uh, they also have their own second round pick. 2023, they have their own first round pick. They don't have a second round pick. 2024, they have so they have 2024, they have their own first round pick. 2025, they have a first and a second. 2026, a first and a second. 2027, a first and a second. All right. If you're looking for a pick, you probably want to get it in 2021 and 2023. 
right? If you're looking for picks from the Charlotte Hornets. Now, if they if they give you a pick in 2021, then they can't give you one in 2022, but they can give you one in 2023. Is it going to be worth it to them to come up off of two first-round draft picks? I don't know. Well, here's the thing, though, right, Sam? I would say in a normal in a normal setting, no. No. No, you'd be a fool. But again, Sim, you gotta see who we're talking about. We're talking about Michael Jeffrey Jordan. He is, again, I'm gonna keep saying this, Sim. He is the Michael Jordan of bad owners. <laughs> Listen, I mean, first of all, for him to even want to sign Gordon Hayward to $30 million is insane. Listen. Listen, you know what, Sim? I will tell you this, right? I will never forget the story about the Brooklyn Nets. When the Celtics, when Danny Ainge called the Nets, he was like, can I get a first-round pick for Paul Pierce, Kevin Garnett, and Jason Terry? He's like, okay, yeah. He's like, should I be? Then um, uh, Danny Ainge was talking to one of his guys. He was like, I think he was talking to the president of the Celtics. He was like, see if you can get another one. He's like, no. He said, just do it. He said, can I get another set first round pick? The Nets was like, yeah. Then he ain't hate the phone. He's like, I got two pounds. He's like, ask for another one. He's like, nah, they're not going to do that. He asked for another one. He got three, he got three first round picks for Paul Pierce, Kevin Garnett, and, and Jason Terry. So again, right, so in a normal situation, no, you'll be, you'll be insane to give up a first two first round picks for Nicholas Batum just to get rid of his contract. But again, we're talking about Jordan. He's going to do what he thinks he, he's going to do what he's going to do. I mean, look, listen, I think if, if they're going to do that, that means that they think that they, that means that they believe that, you know, they're on the cusp of like really, 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 really contending you know, at least in the Eastern Conference, they're not. They're not on the verge of contending. They'll be better, but they're not going to be on the verge of contending. You know, I would say that the Hornets are going to be probably around a, you know, seventh to sixth seed, maybe. They're not on the verge of contending, though. Uh, it would, I don't know, I think it would be crazy. I think if the Knicks are going to do it, it's going to be more like, or if Charlotte is going to do it, it would be more like, you know, they give up. You know, they trade us Nicholas Batum. We'd have to go give back a big contract, which means Julius Randle would go there, right? And it's pro it might be a good fit for them. So Julius Randle would go. That's $18 million. And then we can absorb the other, what's that, 27, the other $9 million, right? And then we take on some draft picks with it, right? So we give them Julius Randle. We bring back Nicholas Batum. And we take on, um, you know, one or two draft picks, one or two draft picks with it, right? That would be something that they might do. Uh, will they? Would they? Would they then throw in a Devonte Graham or Terry Rozier? I don't know. We we got enough guards, right? But the thing is, they got Lamelo. They got Lamelo. So why would they not want to get rid of one of those two guards? They probably will. And then they're, they're going to be bring and they're going to be bringing back Gordon Hayward, right? So you would think that they're going to want to try to clean up that glut just a little bit, and then add to our glut. Well, yeah, I'll be real with you. I don't think they're going to give up Devonte Graham. I think they'll be. I think that's not happening whatsoever. All um, right. Terry Rozier, I'm scared. I'm scared, Sim. I'm scared for the Knicks if they did that. I do not want Terry Rozier. I'm fine. Scary Terry scares me. I'm fine. I don't want scary Terry. If, listen, if we can get if, if we can get a first non protected 2021, and we just take it back, Nicholas Platoon, I can call it a day. I'm happy. And we trade Julius Randle. I'm I'm totally happy. And see, my thing is, I think in the future you're gonna do you can do better than that with Julius Randle. I feel like doing it for Nicholas Batum. A guy that you, I mean, I understand you're bringing back first round draft picks. I get that. 
But I think Julius Randle can be used in a much bigger trade. He is the only guy on the team right now that has a contract over $10 million. Right? So if you're facilitating a trade for a guy that really makes some money, a guy that really is a, uh, a, a difference maker, I think that you can actually use him at the deadline or either at the deadline or, or excuse me, during the draft or something like that for something more than Nicholas Batum. And I'm not, and I understand we would not want Nicholas Batum. That would not be the purpose of it. But I feel like you can actually bring something back that's going to contribute to your team besides just the first round picks. You know what I mean? I'm not fully on I I don't mind doing it, but I don't like doing it with Julius Randle because he's the one guy who has a contract that can help facilitate a trade for a bigger contract. Obviously, as you see with Nicholas Batum, right? You would have to throw you would have to throw Julius Randle in there so that you don't give up any of your young players. You got to. Because because he because he makes eighteen because he makes eighteen million dollars nineteen million dollars, I think you can do it. I think you can do it in, for something more somewhere. It may not be not may not be right now. May not be right now, but down the line, I feel like you can do it for something more than Julius Randle in the first round draft pick. But Sim, though, here's my thing: though, where I have to disagree with you, right? A team like Charlotte, who's probably not going to be as good as people expect, right? They're gonna be. They're gonna. They're gonna be. They're gonna be in the playoffs, which means they're not gonna be in the lottery. Nah, I wouldn't say that. You still have Indiana. You still got the Hawks that are way better. Um, still got the Magic that are always, for some odd reason, they've always been the eighth seed the last couple of years. Are they? They're not better than the Magic. They're not better than the Hawks. They're not better than. Um, Indiana. We, don't, we don't know about the Hawks yet. We don't know what's going on with Indiana. Indiana could break down. Right now, they're having a lot of internal issues. Indiana could break down. Uh, Charlotte's going to be better. You know, you could be right. Maybe not the playoffs. Maybe they're not playoff ready. They could be close to the playoffs. But if they make the playoffs, that pick is not going to be a lottery pick. Yeah, but look, at the end of the day, right? I'll, I'll take, I would personally take that gamble because just a chance to have – Two first round, three, three first round picks in a in a in a deep draft as such as 2021. I don't think you can make that opportunity. And then look at this, right? Let's say the Knicks need a point guard. Let's say the Knicks need a point guard. Mm -hmm. You give up two first round picks to go get Kate coming in. You well, see, everyone is assuming that 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 everyone is assuming that you know those two first round picks will, will, will happen. You don't know. We don't know who's going to have those first round picks or not. You still have two first round picks that you can use and you can trade. You got all these two thousand, you got all these second round picks that you could trade up to get to the first round in 2021. If you wanted to as well, you know what I'm saying? Because you got two first round picks next year. I just think you can do better than taking on Nicholas Batum's contract for a year. And, and you know, I don't what know is, I mean, you know, uh, I just think you can but, do better than that. And, and you may not but, even get a 2021 first-round pick. You may not get a first-round pick until 2022 or something. Yeah, but still, I mean, but still at the end of the day, right, it's like we see where the Charlotte Hornets, they weren't even projected to have the third pick. They weren't projected to have the third pick. They supposed to have, like, the sixth or seventh pick. Right. So, again, right, I just I just feel that if they don't make the bubble, they got a good chance to be in the top ten. If they're in the top ten, then listen, man, if the Knicks can have and I'm willing, I'm really hoping that the Knicks have a good season, right? But worst case scenario, the Knicks don't have a good season. We're in the top ten again. So you're telling me two picks in the top ten as a as a but good draft know, as but 2021? You don't know if they're gonna be in no, the top I ten. Know. You I know what I'm they, saying. I, said, I don't I don't I think they're gonna be scenario. in the top ten. I don't For think the they're gonna be a Charlotte. I don't think Charlotte's going to be in the top 10. You got a little more faith than them than me. Though. I don't think they're going to be in the top 10. I mean, if you bring it in, Gordon Haywood is going to be decent. He should they're be. Not I be mean, a good defensive I mean if, if he gets hurt, that's one thing. I mean, you know, but, you know, LaMelo, we'll see what he is coming in. Um, but a lot of those dudes don't play defense, though. LaMelo don't play defense. Uh, Devontae Graham don't play defense. Uh, 
Malik Monk don't play defense. I mean, <laughs> do. I mean, you don't you don't know what they're gonna be next year as far as playing defense. I mean, I'm pretty sure they're I, not I done know. reshaping their roster just like we're not done reshaping our roster, right? So we got to see I, I what we got to see what it is and, and and what they do. You know, the Charlotte Hornets, uh, they were closer to making the bubble than we were last year. Not by much, <laughs> not by much, but they, <laughs> you know, like a game and a half. You know, like a game and a half. Uh, but remember, all you got to do is be in the top 10 and you have a chance to make the playoffs because you get into that playoff tournament. You get into that tournament. Um, we will We will see. I don't know. I think you can do more for Randall if that is the intention of this team. And it most likely is going to be the intention to move on from Randall because, you know, it, you, it's probably, you know, you, you just drafted – uh, Obi Toppin, you know what I mean? And you're definitely not using Obi Toppin at the three. That would be disastrous. I've seen oh some lineups. God. I've seen lineups out there where people are like, yeah, we're going to put him at the three. I'm like, are these, what, like, what are these people smoking? What are they talking man, about? Man. But Smoke anyway. that Tony Crow if you got him, man. Smoke that Tony Crow if you got him. You know, so, you know, you know, so I'm not understanding that with some people. Uh, but listen, we're going to get back. We're going to talk about Nicholas Batum some more and, and the Charlotte Hornets and what the Knicks could realistically expect, even if if the Knicks are going to get involved with, with it at all. And we'll talk about some more things. The Knicks made some hires that, uh, you know, they added to their coaching staff. Uh, they added, they made some official, some that we already known about, and then they made some official, right? So we're going to get into all of that right now. Uh, for those who are just joining us and are new to the channel, please subscribe to the channel. Ring that notification bell. Um, and this is a show. This is a specialty show right here where this guy that you're looking at with the, you know, you know, the funny looking one, the funny looking I'm, one. I'm the, I'm the cute okay. one, first of all. Um, you know, he, you know, he's, he's going to cook. Right. He's going to make today. He's making red pepper basil pizza. Basil pizza. Right, he's making red pepper basil pizza today. So stick around. Learn how to make red pepper basil pizza. And then, uh, you know, make it with your family and do whatever you're going to do. Or, you know, just laugh at them. Whichever one you want to do is, is totally fine with me. But I'm going to give the floor. I don't, I don't get laughed at. I don't okay. get laughed at. Well, I'm going to give the floor to Chef Zay. So he can on? start making his red pepper basil pizza. I'm excited, Take it man. away, Listen, Chef. What's going on, everybody? Shout out to the chat. I don't know who's in the building because Sin told me to stay off the phone today. So and he's on the phone though, but that's cool though. I guess I got I got ridiculed for the view last week, but it's all good though. It's all love. I have um, important business. Oh, you got business. All right, okay. Talking to Leon Rose, but uh, his Muslim or his Muslim people, you know, I try to tell people. You the man in your city, man. Dudes handing you envelopes, handing you money. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy, man. I went to I went to Lowe's with this dude. Yo, he people let him cut lines and yo, know, I'm just like, yo, what's going on with this dude, man? Who is this guy? Sim, you know, I'm excited today, man. We're making red pepper basil pizza. You know, everybody's been joking about it, you know, laughing, you know, but we're going to cook it tonight, man. I'm excited. Uh Yo, man, this is a good, healthy, you know, pizza. No, no pork, no meat in it. Just straight up vegetables. I like it. Got some basil in there. Got some moots. Got some peppers. And uh, you know what? I'm starving. Let's get to it. So, you know, Sim, what's the first thing we do, Sim? You tell me. You tell me you what's the first thing we do. First what's thing the first thing do, you do? Because I'm not cooking. <laughs> First thing we do, we got to wash our hands, everybody. You got to wash your hands. Stay corona-free. Oh, man. Yo, man, Sam, I'm really excited about this. You hungry, man? I'm sorry. I am hungry. I didn't eat today. I am hungry. I didn't eat today. I didn't eat today. I and I know I someone's mean, laughing that's and talking about that's a surprise. Yes, I just yeah, said it. That yeah, is surprising. Yeah. That's that's pretty surprising. <laughs> that's yeah, real I'm surprising. Sorry, man. Anybody got jokes? Don't forget, I got these hands. All right. So, Sim, the first thing you, you got hands. Do, I don't know if you can use them, but go ahead. 
you listen, I'm all I'm all city, baby. I'm all world. Right. You don't know what that means. Right. So we first know. and foremost, I'm gonna turn the oven on, preheat the oven, Sim. We're gonna do the 420. And no <laughs> shout out to Tony Crow, man. <laughs> I did it just. I did it just for you, Tony. We gonna set it to four twenty, man. Four twenty. Shout out to Tony Crow. We love you. Baby. Are, are you sure that's the right temperature? Yeah, we doing four twenty. Four twenty. Four twenty. Because the last time you said a, uh, you know, last time you said a temperature, we already know what happened. <laughs> Listen, you wanted me to get the insurance money, man. You want the insurance money. I don't want to hear nothing. All right, Sam. You're gonna roll the sleeves up. Roll the sleeves up. Uh -huh. First thing we first thing we do, get your flour. This is the flour right here. I'm using a gold, you know, just regular flour. All purpose flour. This is the fresh drum. I didn't even open this bad boy. You know what I'm saying? I had to spend my hard earned money. So what we're gonna do, already clean the surface of it. So just you know, we're gonna sprinkle it all around there. You know, sprinkle the flour, you know, got that. You know, back in the day, back in the 80s, man, they called me the magic man. You, you, know, you know what I'm saying? I was moving a little different flower back then, but, you know, I'm a changed man. I go to church now. Uh, Yeah, I doubt you um, was moving anything. Come on, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm playing. I'm playing, Dad. So what I'm doing right now, just spread it across, son. Spread it across. Okay. Get the flour in there. It's okay to get your hands, uh, you know. Your kids are going to like that part, you know, because they love doing this. Then I got the pizza dough. You know, if anybody can see, got the pizza dough. Like I said, I got this from the local mart. A lot of y'all wanted me to, you know, cook the bread fresh oven, you know, cook the bread from scratch. You know, we don't got that much money around here. You know what I'm saying? Got to go get the pizza dough. Just going to yeah. put that bad boy. I mean that that's true. He told me how much he had in his savings account just before we got on. Yeah. They, they, they Yo, need... this, this... <laughs> so this is why I like telling you all my business, man. <laughs> oh man. So <laughs> I'm I'm not even gonna get started on that. All right, so, so you see this, right? You see the you see the dough? Mm-hmm. Dough I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit more on the top. Get it nice and good. So this is really important, though, part, Sim. So this part, you know, what I usually do, so you want to make this into a little circle, right? You want to turn this into a circle? Right. So what you do, you just, you know, circle it around like this. You do it like that, right? Okay. But what you do, right, to get the circle in there, you cuff it. So with, your, with, this, with this hand, whatever hand, your dominant hand, you, you go a little bit under there and just cover. So when you're circling, you get into a nice little, nice little thing, nice little soap ball. Because I'm cuffing it while I'm, while I'm moving, I'm cuffing it. See, he's, he's trying to be careful, ladies and gentlemen. You know, he, he, he doesn't want any, uh, you know, pause moment. So he's like, yeah, I'm cuffing the ball. You know, Yo, he, 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 he didn't want to say ball. He said, you know, I'm cuffing. I got my hands cuffed. I'm cuffing it. He, he was Yo. he was very hesitant to say ball. You, you notice so this, that, right? Oh, <laughs> see, this is the crazy thing, man. That always want to do this to me, man. It's okay, Isaiah. I just go ahead the... and cuff the balls. It's okay. <laughs> just go ahead. <laughs> Yo, man, listen, man. And if anybody, you lucky I can't see my phone today. If anybody in these comments talking crazy, just know I will come back. I will find you. But anyways, like I said, we just cuffing the dough right now. Cuff, we're cuffing the, we're cuffing the dough. <laughs> <laughs> we're cuffing the dough. Like I said before, you know, you just move it with your hands and you cuff it in there. You cuff it with this one. So right now you see a perfect little piece of dough. Perfect little ball. So with your hands, and this is the part you know you can do with your kids, let your kids do this part, is that you know, you just start doing this. Your hands, you just start moving it around. You want to get it nice and even. Start spreading it around. Nice and even in there. Hey, Sim, you, I need you. I need you. To let me know who's talking crazy in the chat. Nobody's saying nothing, man. 
Oh, all right, all right, all right. I feel like you lying to me. <laughs> Nobody say nothing. All of them's like, yeah, that's a nice, perfect ball. Uh, he, you know, he did a, an excellent job cuffing it. Just that's all. It's all positive commentary. Oh yeah, that's a YouTube, all right. All right. So we just, like I said, we spread it around, spread it around, spread it around. So right now, can't always keep doing it with your hands. So, you know, we got the mallet. We well, not the mallet, the pizza roller. For this, you just spread across a little bit right here. Spread some, spread some dough on that. Then, gonna get up a little bit. So spreading it around. Ugh. My mom was really hungry, so she's really ready for this pizza. She was cooking all day, getting ready for Thanksgiving. Okay, so this is something nice to make, quick and easy to make before Thanksgiving, right? Yeah, it's a quick, you know, listen, man, you know, you don't feel like ordering, you spend a lot of money on food, getting ready to cook. The food, now, you know, listen, if we black and Latino in this chat, you know, food won't be done till 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock. So it's nothing to get in your belly sink quick. All right, so this is fun part two, right? So the way you spread it out, mm -hmm. you're gonna go like this. You wanna spread it out mm -hmm. a little bit. You wanna yank, you wanna yank it a little bit so that it can stretch. That, so joint got you, that joint got you working pretty hard, man. I can hear you, you know, breathing and everything. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, man, I had a long day at work, man. But I do this for my fans and for the people that love me, you know? I do it for the ladies. I'm, I'm just joking, by the way, you know. I'm a married brother. Mm -hmm. Not yet. <laughs> it's coming soon. <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. Ah, uh, there you go. We're just gonna spread it around. We just keep spreading it around. And also sitting right here, right? This is your personal choice of how long, how big you want the pizza. Mm -hmm. So pretty much it's gonna be just me and my mother eating it, really. So I'm not gonna make a big one. You know, I gotta watch the figure, you know. Yeah, dad opted out of this one. He already knew the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I said, so this this really is, you know, it's really not a uh long process like right now i'm just really waiting for uh just waiting for the oven to really go so the pizza dough is pretty much done okay so what i'm gonna do now well that's doing what well, that's just there i'm gonna start cooking i'm gonna start cutting my peppers up I'm gonna, cook, I'm gonna cook those a little bit. I like to lightly cook them before I put them in the oven. Mm -hmm. I like to season them a little bit, just a little bit, not a lot. And know yeah, everybody, we, I'm not. We I'm know not how using you do with that <laughs> seasoning. We know what's up with the listen, seasoning already. We listen, see what happened with them, with them, with them burgers, man, and them heart attack yo, burgers you made. Yo, son, I'm reading the comments. Everybody, like, yo, you must be the sodium king. <laughs> you was definitely the sodium king on that joint. So you know what, man? Like I said, the peppers though, the peppers I like to. Well, okay, so yeah, season. yeah. Please explain what you see seasoning the peppers with, because you know I always thought that the pepper <laughs> was already seasoning for the most part. <laughs> I just do a little quick adobo, nothing, you know, nothing major. It's really nothing. It's nothing really not crazy. But see, I, I always uh, thought that the peppers were already like they were seasoning. So I, you know, like they are seasoning. You, you feel what I'm saying? Nah, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I definitely understand. But I like a little taste in my pepper. A little taste. A little tastes more, like a little pepper. Extra. It tastes like pepper. Listen, man, I like to do this. All right, I like all to right, do right. Okay. I'm hey, just trying. I'm just, kill trying me. I'm just trying to figure it out because I thought that pepper was it. already seasoning, but I got so you. I never I got heard you. of seasoning seasoning. 
<laughs> Listen, you don't cook. You guess why you, <laughs> why you cook with some I'm saying I never heard of seasoning the seasoning. <laughs> Listen, now you're going to have people in this damn chat that act like they Gordon Ramsay. You're going to be like, Yo, you don't really do seasoned pepper. Listen, man. <laughs> I might not even season it. Y'all bullying me. I might not even season it. <laughs> nobody, yeah. nobody bullying nah, somebody, you, bro. Yeah, no one is bullying. Somebody's bullying me in. Somebody's bullying me in these chats, man. No but, one uh, is bullying you, man. Listen, man. No one is Sam, bullying. Gonna, you. Sam, you be lying to me, man. They're not. But uh, yeah. So we got that going on, program. So, anyway, so, you know, uh, go, yeah, ahead let's season, keep some you know go ahead and season the seasoning. Oh, uh, my Lord. This is why I don't mess with This is why I don't mess with you, man. You do stuff like that. I'm just saying, you know, go ahead and season the seasoning. Um, but while, while, while we're talking, the Knicks did make a couple of hot. Oh, while he's seasoning the red peppers. <laughs> okay, you stop. <laughs> I'm just saying, why are you seasoning, why are you seasoning the red peppers? I'm the Knicks not made seasoning the red peppers, man. Now you change the recipe. How can you say here's here's the recipe and then change the recipe? I'm not seasoning the red peppers. But anyway, anyway, Knicks, can we talk some more Knicks? Yeah, man? let's talk some more Knicks. The New York Knicks they hired ten year NBA veteran Aaron Brooks. Right. Um, I don't know exactly what he's going to be. I think he's going to work. He's going to do some work on the NBA level as well as on the G League level. Um, you know, so I don't know if he's exactly going to work with the point guards or if he's going to, you know, simply, yeah, I don't, I don't know exactly what he's going to do <laughs> Yeah, as far as being, um, you know, as far as working with the Knicks, I really don't know exactly what he's going to do, you know, but I guess, I guess he might be a good, uh, a good pickup for the, for the assistant coaches. Coaches, uh, the Knicks got mad assistant coaches. Matter of fact, I think I have something here. I'm going to read. I'm going to run down. Um, they put out a list of everyone that they hired and made official. So let me see. Let me read this down. They got. Hmm. Can't even read it. They put it all in one document. Let me see if I can open this document up. All right, let's see. The Knicks hired, or they made it official today. Number one is Ermin. We talked about Ermin yesterday. Uh, Ermin, you know, he's the guy. He's the guy that when he worked for the Golden State Warriors, he was caught videotaping or recording, not videotaping. He was caught recording. Recording the coaches, you know, before game speeches, uh, recording the coaches talking to one another after the games. Uh, he was caught recording the players. Um, he got fired. Right. This is the time when Mark Jackson was there. He got fired. Right. And then he went to I think he went to New Orleans and he coached in New Orleans as an assistant coach for about three years. Um, and then he went to coach the Boston Celtics uh, G League team, the main Red Claws, and he coached there for a couple of years. Uh, so this is Ermin. Here, here's this. This is Darren Ermin. His biography it says Ermin joins the Knicks as an assistant coach, having served as head coach of the main Red Claws, the NBA G League team affiliate of the Boston Celtics uh, since 2019. The Red Claws finished third in the Eastern Conference with a 28-14 record. An increase of 19 wins from the previous season. Uh, from what people say, uh, this guy is, um, you know, he's going to be like a, a a defensive whisperer to Tom Thibodeau. All right. Uh, the Knicks also hired Aaron Brooks. All right, he's going to join the Knicks after recently playing in Australia uh, with the Illawarra Hawks. That's the same team that the Mellow Ball was playing with in 2019. He played 10 seasons in the NBA, averaging 9.7 points and uh, three assists over 20.8 minutes in 645 games, 183 starts for Houston, Phoenix, Sacramento, Denver, Chicago, Indiana, and Minnesota. 
He also played for Tom Thibodeau in Chicago during the 2014-15 season um, and in Minnesota during the 2018-2019 season. Oh, I'm sorry, Minnesota during the 2017-2018 season. So, you know, we're going to see what Aaron Brooks, you know, we'll see what he brings to the team. Uh, the Knicks also hired Larry Greer as an advanced scout slash assistant coach. Uh, he joins the Knicks after three decades of coaching and scouting experience. He most recently spent one year with the Phoenix Suns as an assistant coach. Prior to Phoenix, he spent two years with the Minnesota Timberwolves working under coach Tom Thibodeau. First as an advanced scout 2017 and 18, and then as an assistant coach in 2018-19. Previously, he worked for the Houston Rockets as an advanced scout and for the Portland Trailblazers as an advanced scout and an assistant coach. All right, the Knicks also hired Richard Williams. They hired a bunch of guys. I mean, for the most part, they totally revamped their scouting staff. Um, they better. Uh, I, I mean, I mean, I mean, they they, they brought in newest uh, video coordinators, scouts. Okay, so they brought in Richard Williams as a uh, strength and conditioning coach. They brought in Reggie Johnson and T.J. Zanin as scouts. They brought in Ike Azatam, Christopher Santo, and Gabriel Snyder as assistant video coordinators. All right, so they really have said we're going to revamp uh, our scouting, um, our entire scouting department and added, you know, more oh. assistant coaches and things like that. So, they, listen, I've never seen such an influx, such an influx of um, coaches and video coordinators and assistant coaches and scouts coming to the team. Never seen uh, never seen it the way that we're seeing it right now. You know well, what I'm saying? Sim, you, know so, what's, you know what's crazy though, Sim? To me, right? Because I remember, no no disrespect, you know, we all, uh, however how you feel about Obama, but Craig Robinson, listen, he was garbage. He wasn't really good. It, listen, there's too many reports of like, you know, his <laughs> player development or you know whatever he was doing, it was uh, lazy. You know, man. it was lazy. It wasn't. It wasn't anything of you know. It wasn't anything that was new or you know. The biggest news was that we 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 were all wondering is Obama going to watch the Knicks game? Yeah, I mean, yeah. So tell us what you're doing over there with the red peppers, man. I'm, I'm switching it over to the brick to the brick oven stove so that they can see what you're doing. Right now, I'm just sauteing them a little bit. Like I said, I like to cook yeah. them a little bit before they go in the oven. Yeah, you about, to, you about to, they about to come up out the pan, and it looks like. Why don't you, why don't you take on, the man. pan and just flip it towards the camera just a little bit so they can see inside the pan a little bit? Yeah, just don't put it on the floor. Nah, man, you know we don't do that over here. Last time I dropped something, I was a baby. Mm-hmm. Because we all know the dog is in control. So as soon as you drop it on the floor, that's it. The dog got it. Nah, he... Blue, the last, nah, blue's upstairs. Listen, the last show that we had, ladies and gentlemen, he got into an argument with the dog, and the dog won. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a lie. First of all, I wasn't That's on not a argument. lie. That's the truth. The dog won. Listen, I know you're not talking with your dogs, man. I but know my you're dogs, not talking. But my dogs don't win arguments with me. Listen... I'm in control right. with my dogs. You know what I'm saying? For whatever Man. the reason is, your dogs win arguments with your so, dogs so, wins arguments with you. So got yeah, listen. I ain't gonna say nothing. So Sim, what I'm about to do right now, I'm about to get the, the uh pan ready. I'm about to get the okay. pan ready here. Okay. So I got right, my so. got the corn got the cornmeal. Got the cornmeal, got the pot right here. You're gonna spread it around here so it don't stick. You don't need a lot of cornmeal. All right. Now my pizza sim, I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't I don't do round pizza. I'm like from Connecticut. We don't do round pizza. We do 
and orthodox kind of pizzas. So we got the pizza in here. Sound to me like that's just an excuse for not being able to make a nice round circle, but go ahead. And for whatever reason, hey. you know, but go ahead. Hold on one second. Can you see me, Sam? I, I don't, don't worry. I got it. I got it on the right camera angle. You know what I'm saying? I'm helping you out. There you go. Appreciate that. All right, so you see, I got the pizza in there. Mm -hmm. All right. Pizza in there. Show sure got it in the corners. Like I said, you know, this is for me and my mom, so I'm not gonna make a big old pizza, you know. All right. Here's the fun part. NZ Richie asks, is this a cooking channel? No, this isn't a cooking channel. This is a New York Knicks channel, but this is just a, a fun show we do where we cook a, a meal and we talk about the New York Knicks. You know, All so, right. you know. But I appreciate you for jumping in, NZ Richie. I appreciate that too, brother. I appreciate that. So now we got the pizza sauce from the local Italian deli, my man Giovanni. Uh, that's really his name too. I'm not being a typical Italian name. It's really his name. Shout out to my boy Giovanni. Yeah. Now, Sim, are you a saucy kind of guy, or are you like you know you don't like a lot of sauce on your pizza? Or you like, I like you know, a, a good mix. I like a good mix. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna do a good mix then. Yeah, All Miles, right. you're right. Those edges not stretching because he went a little bit light on the dough. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, you know, <laughs> I, I did. I did. <laughs> We're going to get it right, though. We're going to get it right. We're going to get it right. All right. Afro Afro said, my man is making a Sicilian-style pizza. He said, for New Yorkers, we don't we, we don't want that. That's, yeah, That's you are making a Sicilian-style pizza. pizza. Sim, Connecticut got the best pizza. Don't ever let nobody fool you. I don't know if Connecticut has the best of anything, but. We really, we really do. It's literally been written that we got the best pizza. By who? But I'm, well, because of Mystic I, Pizza? Mystic Pizza? What? Is that what it is? No, we don't. Is that why? No. You go to you go to Martin Pizza, man. You go to Martin Pizza. You go to Frank Pepe's. Best pizza in the world. Okay. Hand, hands down. And every, I know everybody in these comments is going to start talking, but Connecticut Pizza, I put it next to any pizza in the world. Mm -hmm. All right. Now we got the... Got the whole milk mozzarella. Okay. Can can you pronounce the name? We've been working on this for a couple of weeks now. Sangrito. Close enough. Working. Okay. We, we've been working on it for a couple of weeks, y'all. Then, you know, you just spread it around. You just spread the love around. Spread the love around. You a cheesy kind of guy? Like a lot of cheese? Yeah, I like a good... Like I said, I like a good mix of both. I me personally, I like my New York corner pizza. You know, where I can pick it up and let the oil drip off of it. Nice, nice slice of pizza. You know, that's that's basically that's yeah, that's what I like. I'm gonna put a little more cheese in here. A little more cheese. Joe, Joe Curry, see, good question. He said, "There's pizza in Connecticut." Exactly. Ah, <laughs> them the haters. Only the haters <laughs> say stuff like that. We got the best pizza in the world. And I'm, I'll have a clean debate about it. In your world. In your world. In your world. In your world. Listen. Listen, there's a reason why we the richest state. Miles Boyd. Right, My, Miles Boyd said it's looking good so far. He said just don't do too much with the cheese. No, nah, we don't do too much. All right. It's looking good. It's looking good. I think he might have pulled the wool over our eyes, y'all. I think I think he pulled the wool over our eyes a little bit. Yeah, I think somehow he did a little camera voodoo and, and opened up a package and then thrown it through that pizza on there. Come and on, now he's gonna throw, you know, he went and got a DiGiorno's real quick. <laughs> <laughs> no DiGiorno's, baby. No DiGiorno's. Oh, now we just got the peppers in there. I don't know what you're listening to. What are you listening to? 
my it's my go to music. And we got the got the basil sim. Got the basil. Okay, fresh basil. Yes, sir. Got some basil in there. Man, Sam, I wish you could smell this right now, man. <sighs> smells really good right now, man. I love I love fresh basil. It smells really good. Oh, the basil. I was about to say, I was like, I was about to say, how can you smell the pizza and it's not cooking? <laughs> okay, you're talking about the, the basil. You talk about that's what I'm talking. I'm talking about the pizza. You can smell the pizza. You can smell the pizza right now and it's not cooking. I'm 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 that good. Okay. When you get this level, when you get this All level right. of cooking, right. you can smell it before it's cooked. Okay. Put a little All more right. couple basil leaves in there. Big shout out to Danny Thomas, man. Thank you for the super chat. He said, for Charlotte to trade Batum, I need two first picks. One of them is coming in this upcoming draft, 2021. Um, so, Sim, I agree with him, man. Listen, let's get it. All right, yeah. Sim. So, we're pretty much almost done. And now... We got the fresh mozzarella. This is my favorite part because I love a little extra cheese in there. But this piece is going to be a little cheesy. Ain't nothing easy being a little cheesy. That boy up. Don't let it defeat you. <laughs> Listen, if I, if, I, if I struggle a little bit, uh, I, I, need you know. you to, I need you to pan the camera away. It, it, it would be an easy task to just use some scissors, cut it open. You know, that would be a little bit easier than fighting with, there you go. There you go. Learn how to use your utensils, man. Listen, I got a big brain. Yeah. Just because you got a big brain don't mean you got a lot of knowledge in it. <laughs> Listen, man, don't be, don't be my, don't get on my list. Listen, Andy and Tony on my list. Cause they didn't want to, they didn't want to tag me. Uh, my man, Raw Hebrew, thank you for the super chat. He said, can Charlotte take Randall and it still work? I Yeah, they could. I think they could take Randall and it would still work. Right? They could take Randall. They could take his $19 million. That's what he gets paid this season. Uh, and then they can absorb the remainder of that $9 million, $8 million uh, to make up Nicholas so, Batum's contract. They could do that. So, so Sim, right, real quick, um, I like to break mine up. I don't know how some people do. I like to break my mozzarella up. Mm -hmm. I have it, of course, in place a little bit. I do a couple pieces of fresh mooch, you know. And then sometimes there's like a little plate that has some uh, cheese on it. Mm -hmm. Put the cheese right there. So I do one more piece. Man, we'll take a picture of this drawer, and we good. We're going to stick it in the oven. You're going to take a picture of it now? No, I wish okay. no, 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 no. Then you just say you're going to take a picture of it? Yeah, no, I'm going to show it to the camera. Okay. All right, we done. Okay. Bo -bo. Okay. Hey, you're making progress, bro. My man, Derek Grant, he said, he said this is the first meal that looks good in preparation. You're making progress, my brother. You guys are watching the transformation of <laughs> a G League player to oh, a rotational player. Go. All right? Here You're watching go. that transformation right now. It look good, Sim. It look good? It looks good. It looks good. All right. We're going we gonna to stick it in the oven. All right. Head stick it in the oven, man. How long are you keeping it in there for? Uh, Probably 15 minutes. Okay. All right. All right. Well, while we're doing that, can you put me on mute? I'm gonna wash the dishes because we gotta. My mom gets a little upset at me, so I gotta, I gotta wash the dishes. All right, so don't judge me, everybody. <laughs> I'm gonna put you on mute while he's washing the dishes, ladies and gentlemen. We'll put him on mute, and we'll um, you know continue to talk Nick soon. When we're ready to get back to it, we'll bring Isaiah over so he can talk some more Nick's with us. Um. Again, ladies and gentlemen, yes, the Knicks can. The Knicks can definitely trade Julius Randle, absorb Nicholas Batum's contract. Um, I'm just wondering if it's the best move. 
for Randall. Not, not nothing about absorbing his contract or absorbing any contracts, but is it the best move for Randall? Can you get something better for Randall later? Right? That's 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 the question that I have. Um you know, if they if they went ahead and did it, I wouldn't be mad. I would like to have a young player. Um now, I just, I just, me, I, I mean, you know, what are we going to do with Nicholas Batum? He's probably, he's not going to play, right? He'll be a good leader on the bench, I guess. You know, a good locker room guy. Um, you know, we, we would get that out of him. You can't have enough of those guys, right? Are you going to sign him back for another year? I don't know. If he's a good locker room guy, maybe you do. Maybe you say, you know what, we can sign this guy back for another year, and it's all good. You know, I would think probably not, though. Right? I would think probably not. Hey, who knows? You know, and, and we'll see what the Knicks decide to do. Um, there's, they got a little bit of time. You know, I mean, Charlotte's not going anywhere. They're going to continue to try to field offers to see if they can clear up that space. And, you know, to facilitate this trade. With the Boston Celtics now, I, I and I say there's not a lot of time. I mean, they have a little bit of time, but in the same vein, they don't have that much time because you know you got Thanksgiving tomorrow, and then and then you got this weekend, and then uh, Tuesday starts training camp. And you would think they clearly want to have Gordon Hayward in training camp starting Tuesday, right? Why? I mean. You know, you want to get started right off top. You don't want to play any games, you know, messing around, still trying to get Gordon Hayward in. So if something's going to happen, and if the Knicks are going to be involved, then guess what? It's going to happen probably not tomorrow because it's Thanksgiving, but it's going to happen soon. You know, it's going to happen soon. Um, so, you know, we just need to keep our eyes out to see what happens there. Uh, I'd also think that the Knicks should... I, if I'm the Knicks, I would approach Atlanta. Atlanta makes up made some moves this offseason, and they're going to be much better. They're going to be much better with the moves that they made. Uh, they they brought in Danilo Gallinari. They just signed uh, Bogdan, you know Bogdanovich. Um, they may have some, you know, they may be looking to shed. Or, or clean up a glut at the guards spot or the small forward spot, guard slash small forward spot, right? Um, maybe the Knicks look into Cam Reddish. Right? And if they did look into Cam Reddish, what will, you know, what would Atlanta require for Cam Reddish? I mean, you're not just going to get him for, any, for nothing, I doubt that they, I doubt that they'd move him. You know, Bogdanovich, I think, is in his 30s. Or not in his 30s, or just reaching his 30s. Right? Uh, he's, 28, so, he's 28. He's 28. He's 28? Okay, I thought maybe, yeah, I thought he was 30. No, he's 28. So then they got a little bit of time with uh, Bogdanovich then. So they got a little bit of time. So maybe, you know, maybe, maybe. Cam Reddish, uh, maybe he could be on the table, but then the Knicks are going to be giving up. What would you give up to get Cam Reddish, or would you even uh, would you even consider Cam Reddish? Um, be honest with you, Sim. Uh, hmm. I'm going to say no, and the reason why I say no, right, is because Cam is kind of in that same boat as the Kevin Knoxes and and the Nilakinas to me. Cause right now, let's be real, Sam. If if um if Cam doesn't do good, he's already behind Gallinari and then Bogon. I mean right there then Kevin Herter. You know, these guys where he can play the two or the three, it's it's not looking good for him right now if he if he doesn't get if he doesn't improve the game, you know what I'm saying? But you're saying he's in the boat like who? Kevin Knox. Why? He just came into the league. 
I mean, this I mean, will be his second year in the league. How is he already um, in a situation where you're looking at him and say, oh, is he a bust? And he just came into the league. I mean, literally just came into the league. I mean, it's tough. Right? I don't know. I didn't see I didn't see him play like that. But from what you know, I did see, it wasn't that good. So I don't know. I would okay. I won't, I won't say he's in. I won't say he's in the Kevin Knox boat. I won't say that. But I let me will read, say that. Okay, let, let, let me read his stats to you. He averaged ten point five points per game. Shot thirty eight point four percent from the field. And he shot thirty three percent from three. That's not bad for a rookie. He averaged three point seven rebounds, one point five assists. That's not bad for a rookie. Not bad at all. Oh, that NBA. Listen, we're gonna see. I mean, what more would you have wanted from him? 18 points, 16 rebounds, you know, regular stuff. Yeah, as a rookie. <laughs> everybody, that's what everybody, uh, again, that's every, what, that's everybody, everybody wants the rookie. Everybody wants the rookies to just, you know, come in and be stars right off top, man. It's crazy. It makes no sense. But makes you, no know sense. What, you know what? You know, on a serious note, though, if, if, we, if we did have the opportunity to get a. a to get uh, Cam Reddish, I, I would give up. Uh, I'd give up a Dallas pick. You give up a Dallas pick. I think that's a fair exchange. Okay, and for those who are just joining us, I got uh, Isaiah Chef Zay, who you know who, who I'm talking with right now. He's doing some stuff behind the scenes that he don't want you to see. Sooner or later, he's going to sit back down in front of the camera. We'll come back and we'll, you know, we're going to continue to have the conversation, so, you know, but that's whose voice go. you hear. All right. Um, so you give up, you you would give up next year's 2021 Dallas pick? Nah, 2023. 2023. Okay. So, so I'm, I'm going to flip the pizza a little bit. I'm going to flip it on to get it, you know. All right, so let me get the brick oven up so people can see what you're doing on the brick oven. Let us see what it looks like right now. Okay, all right, it's getting there. It's getting there. <sighs> all right, so what I'm going to do right now, sir, mm -hmm. I'm going to start preparing the butter, the butter, the butter, oh my God, <laughs> the butter, the butter, garlic, and parsley. Here we so, go. So, so you're gonna start doing what? Say that again, because <laughs> the butter, garlic, butter. Wait, <laughs> the <laughs> the butter, garlic, parsley. The butter, garlic, parsley. Okay, so you're gonna start making that. Yep. Yeah. All right. So let's let me uh let me get the cutting table again. I know if I'm the Knicks, yeah, I, I, I see something. Stephen Fox, man, thank you for the super chat. He says, send wish you and the NBK family a happy and safe Thanksgiving. Uh, the same here, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully, everyone's going to be safe um, and enjoy, you know, enjoy time with your family or whatever it is that you're doing. You know, just enjoy the time. Um, but back to Cam Reddish, I I wouldn't want to give up other young players. Because you want to, you know, we're trying to accumulate young players and assets. Uh, but I would definitely consider um, Cam Reddish. Right? I just seen someone in there say that they'd give up uh, Reggie Bullock. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't see where I don't see where it is. I got to try to find it. Looks like they said um, they'd give up Reggie Bullock, Dennis Smith Jr., and someone else. And I think they said but a they draft pick. But they don't need a point guard, though. But see, so I understand when people say, I don't, sometimes it's hard to understand when people say stuff like that because you got to understand, right? People want trades to work just for the Knicks. You know, giving up, they don't want Dennis Smith Jr. They don't, what, what, if, if I'm a smart GM for FIFA, how do you know I mean, they don't want, how, do you, how do you know that, though? Because Listen, they don't need, they, they have Trey Young and they have Trey Young and Ray John Rondo. Ray John Rondo is there for two years. That doesn't mean he's going to be there for the rest of his career. Ray John Rondo's on the last leg of his career. They may even say, you know what, we can use a guy that is uh, uh, a backup point guard. Well, Sim, the thing with but, – well, see, I'm thinking about it as a GM for the Hawks. You need defensive players now. 
Because you don't have that many. I mean, you have Gallinari, you have Bogart, who doesn't play defense. You have Trey Young, who really don't play defense. He's the, probably the worst defender in the league. Um, you have who else? Um, John John Collins doesn't play defense. Capella plays defense. Rondo doesn't play defense. So you have a lot of these guys. Rondo doesn't play defense? I don't play no defense. Okay. Sam, when do you, you no, bugging, so come bro. on now? You bugging, bro. That's that's okay. been one Hold of his on. calling cards in the league. That's he may he not be defense. he may not be the best defender right now, like you know what he was because he's older. He is a good defender. That's Hold been on, that's Listen, what Sam. Rondo has done I, in I, the league. I think, I think, I think he's you're been, wrong about that one. He's been known to be a good defender and a bad shooter. Basically, Frank Nilakina before Frank Nilakina was Frank Nilakina. <laughs> but no, I don't know. I don't think he played defense personally. But... Wait, hold on. Let's let's go to the chat. Chat, am I bugging? Does Rondo play <sighs> defense? Please tell me. Please, chat, tell me if I'm wrong. Bro, if Rondo all right, play so defense. I'm looking. Kevin Berg, Bergen said Rondo's play. Rondo plays defense. Uh, let's see who else. Uh, someone said you're bugging. Not Zay. Not Zay, not Chef Zay, not Zay. He wants to make it clear that he's not you. Um, says Rondo does play defense. Crewhead did say Rondo's not the same defender, and that's true. Coach Joe Judge said Rondo definitely plays defense. Yeah, most people is, is saying that he plays we love defense. You. We love you, Coach. We love you, Coach Judge, by the way. We love you. But, uh, okay, all right, all right, all right. All right. Sometimes I know when I'm wrong. Simmons Singh I'm said the, wrong. Simmons Singh said the garlic smell got to your head. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is my be, last garlic. You might be way. right this about is... that. Oh, uh, y'all crazy, man. <laughs> I hate yo, man. I'll be honest with you though, Sam. I hate feeling garlic, man. It's it's gonna get on my nerves. Yeah, I bet. Gotta have patience to do this job. It's annoying. Yeah. But uh, I mean, again, right? I don't know. I mean, if they want Dennis Madrid, please, by all means, take the kid. Um, I don't know. Can we talk about that for a minute, Sim? Yeah, let's talk about that. Let's, let's talk, talk about, about that. that. Let's talk about that. Listen, I mean, I think as all Nick fans, we pretty much all watch it. Unless you're, uh, unless you're, who's Mark, who didn't even know we had uh, Nolan <laughs> Noel. <laughs> I don't know where Mark listen, be at. We, listen, we love you, Mark, man, but we know you be... You be in where, where he live, Queens? He's from Queens, right? Yeah. Mark be tripping yeah, sometimes. Man. But but yeah, go ahead. Yeah. You want to yeah, talk so about Dennis Smith Jr., right? Yeah. Yeah, we all seen the video of Dennis Smith Jr. And um Oh, by the way, some before I go, just what I'm doing right now, just crushing the red pepper, just like crushing the um, the garlic. Uh-huh. Just crushing they're gonna make it a little smaller. But yeah, so we all seen the video. Um, I mean, look, right? <laughs> I remember we was in the group chat talking about it today. I mean, look, we, we seen him work out with, with Chris Paul. We all thought that was going to change it. You know, we, until the court, until he gets on the court, man, uh, it was a nice video. It was nice. But they in the gym. You know nobody missing a gym. <laughs> you, I mean, you know that, man. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, yeah, he, but... but. But that's not what you're looking at, though, in my opinion. When you're looking at this video, you're not looking to see, is he making the shots? That's just, you're looking to see, is his form better? Right? That's what you're looking to see. Is his shot looking better? Not if he's making the shots. Because you can be in the gym and your shot, you know, you got terrible form and you're still making them because of the competition that you're playing against. And by, and by the way, he's at the basketball academy, CP3's basketball academy. All right, so, but that's not what you're looking are they at. Both from, are they both from North Carolina? South Carolina. Oh, South uh, Carolina. Okay. Uh, he's he, he's from Fayetteville, so I think okay. so. That's 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 North Carolina, but it's Fayetteville's North Carolina, but it's close to the South. It's close to South Carolina. Okay. It's like near the border, know, or closer to the border really of North Carolina and South Carolina. Because I know he's really close with uh, uh, J. Cole and stuff, so. Yeah, and 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 Chris Paul is from South Carolina, I believe. So, you know, they're going to have. I, hey, I mean, he, 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 could be, he could be in South Carolina uh, making it when they made this video. He could have been in South Carolina, you know, but I'm but just saying, you know. But they must have been, right? 
Because I know they're about to get ready for the holidays. I mean, I'm, I'm just saying, he could have been in South Carolina. This gym could be in South Carolina. It could be in North Carolina. You know, they're, yeah. you know, e either way. But, you know, what we're looking at is to see if the form changed. And, you know, I looked at looking at a couple of other shots, and I do look like the form looks better. Right? There's a better flick of the wrist. Uh, you know, I think he's a little, his base is a little bit more stable on the shot. And the bigger thing no hitch i don't see a hitch now when you start getting up against better competition then you know that hitch could come back right 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 now he's playing against lower competition and that's okay because when you're working on your skill set you're going to do it against lighter competition lighter defense right if anybody here has uh, practiced or, 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 you know, worked on their basketball skills, what happens? You do it against light defense. Or if you played basketball, the coach says light defense, right? Light defense. Why? So that you can get the skill. You can work on the skill. You can perfect the skill. And then once the coach feels like everyone's perfected that skill, then the coach is like, okay, let's pick up. Let's go live. Right, so it's okay for him to be working on the skills that he's been taught from Abdul Rauf as he's, you know, you, you know, as, as he's building the skill. It's okay for him to, uh, you know, go against lighter competition. I think, in my opinion, in my opinion. Right, so you know what I'm looking for. What I'm looking for there, though, is that he's improved his, uh, he's improved his form. Better base. All the things that, if you read the article that Abdul Rauf talked about, I was lo looking for those things. And I think I saw them. It's hard to say because, you know, you don't get a really good, clear picture of them. But I think I saw a little bit, at least. Go ahead, Isaiah. Then we can get back to talk about DSJ. Yeah, I mean, the pizza's almost done. So I'm just waiting for the butter to melt. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I'm going to add that joint. And then we're pretty much good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to slap this on there. And then uh, cut the pizza up. And then we're good. But you're yeah, so up. you're cut, you're cutting up that parsley. Don't get it. Don't get any ideas of bagging it up and trying to, you know, go out on the block with it or nothing like that. Listen, I already run the block, man. You know, just what I'm saying, saying don't you know, don't get any ideas because, you know, you can go to prison for that too. Man, listen, man. I, I used to run the block back in my day, but you know, I found I found God, man. I mean, so I just got the I got the okay. butter going over here, so. You say you got you got what you got what? Got the butter moving over here. I don't know if okay. you can see real quick. I got the butter moving with the garlic. I'm gonna let that cook for a little bit. Add mm -hmm. the parsley in there, and then uh, pretty much good. So actually, uh, you ready for this pizza, sir? Let's see what it looks like. Let's see what it looks like. All right. All right, we're going to go over to the brick oven stove he got going on here as he stands in front of the camera. I told him earlier, stand on the opposite side of the camera, but, you know, yellow bus kids don't get it that quick. Wait, what? First of all, I, I took the yellow kid. bus when I... Short bus I kids don't get short, it that quick. Listen, let me say something. Hold on. I took the short bus two years. Two years. <laughs> <laughs> took like it two that, years, man. That's it? <laughs> that's it. Ah, oh, here you go. Okay. All right. All right. That's looking good, man. That's looking good. That's looking I'm going to point that over. All right. All right. Oh, bring it over to the prep table and set it down. It's a good view over there. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. You see? You know, it's nice, nice little red pepper. Right now, it's just the red pepper pizza because he hasn't put the basil on it yet. I did put the basil on it. Oh, you did put the basil. That's right. That's right. You did put the basil on it. You're putting the garlic sauce on it. You're about to put the garlic sauce. See, my bad. My bad. Right. So there you go. He's got the, you know, the red pepper basil pizza. It's looking good. He's about to put some, you know, he's making up the garlic, garlic, uh, garlic butter sauce. Gonna put it on there. All right, Isaiah did his thing this time. 
He did his thing this time. He even got a compliment. Someone said, damn, that looks professional, Isaiah. Hey, I ain't going to let that get to my head. <laughs> I'm not going to let it get to uh, my head. You feel good now. JJP said it looks good, but you got to clean the lens. Clean the camera lens or something. I got you. Yeah, we're, work, we're working on getting that man a couple better, you know, cameras and stuff like that. So, you know, so so we come off popping, you know, we're going to come off popping. We're working on it. Hey, hey, mom. Uh-oh. Come on, get some of come, come get a slice of this, mom. Now it's time for the mom test. Ma, hey, that's what we got to call it, the mom test. It's time for the mom test. Ma, come on, mom. It's time for the mom test. So right now, so so I'm looking at it now. It looks like you are you, are you putting are you only putting the the garlic sauce around the edges of the pizza, around yeah, the crust of the, the pizza? Okay. Yeah, just the crust. Ma, you coming? Wait, Dad, you hmm? coming, Dad? I thought Dad already canceled out of this one. Uh, no, nah. my mom forced him. <laughs> Somebody said Where's now I'm going to order pizza Someone said now I'm ordering pizza See that you did your job man You did your job If someone says now they're ordering pizza That means they, you did your job So let me just let me just you know Uh oh Couple of slices It's not really a square it's more of an oval Said you were making a square. It's more of an oval, but that's all good. You know, there's this place in Maryland. I don't know how many people, you know, are around Maryland or, or whatever. I know we got people from all over the place. There's a place in Maryland called Mod Pizza. Right? And it's a it's a fast growing chain. Um pizza chain. And they basically do it, it's basically like a it's like the subway of pizzas, right? They make, for the most part, thin crust pizza, so, right? You got to try and, a piece right here, though. So, wait, Dad, you got to come, <laughs> come on, Dad. For, wait, come on, Dad. You got to come over here. Come over here. Yeah, for, for the most part, my so, pizza is, is thin crust so, pizza. And, and, and <laughs> hey, Pop, doing? what's going on? How you feeling? All right, now. So, All right. You tell, try a piece, so you gotta, tell us the truth about this now. Tell us the truth about it, Pop. Pizza. Look, look like look like it tastes good. <laughs> look like it's working over there. I gotta get, get peace from my mother. <laughs> oh man. Look like it but, tastes uh, good. So it passed the dad test, not the mom test. Passed the, the dad test. Passed the dad test. Passed the dad test. So I see some people say that they've seen mod pizza. Um, so when I say it's the subway of pizza, I don't mean it's the subway of pizza in the fact that they uh that they uh it tastes like subway, but it's like subway because you go in, you know, they you take the I dough. Made no, you know, I made this. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't. He thought he, 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 thought like he, he ordered it. Yeah, he thought he thought you taught me how to make this. Like, oh, I'm oh. <laughs> <laughs> now nah, I'm glad. Thanks, Daddy. Thank you, Daddy. Yeah, that's what's up. <laughs> he said bye, y'all. <laughs> All right, appreciate it, Pop. But my pizza, y'all. I, I, you know, I think it's cool, Isaiah. I think you 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 would like it. You know, you go through a line just like you go no, through you know Subway. What's crazy? And and they put the sauce on it. They put all the ingredients on it. They throw it in the oven, brick oven, for about ten minutes. And then you and then you get your pizza. You know what's crazy? Uh, so you were supposed to take me. Yeah, I we remember that. We were supposed to that. go. Yep. We were supposed to go. Yep. Like now I had, uh, to, cook, I had to cook for y'all. <laughs> yeah, I, I seen one person say. I think maybe it was JJP said he don't like my pizza. I like my pizza. I I think it's pretty good. And I plan on doing some investing in my pizza. Because they're one of the fastest growing chains across the country, man. So, no, not yet. Yeah, mom pizza is not delivery. But, so he's taking it to mom. Right? He's taking it to Wait, mom. Wait, hold on, hold on. 
Let me let me bring my camera. Uh oh. We got it. We passed the dad test. We got it. Ma, hold on a second, you know mom. mom. You know, mom don't like being on camera now. See, I got to turn the camera off. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, mom ain't going to be on camera. But but anyway. No, go I'm ahead. I'm not, you're not on camera, mom. Take a bite. You got to take a bite of it, mom. You got to gotta pass the mom test. You got me in camera. I don't got you on camera, mom. <laughs> She worried about her game. <laughs> Ma, come on, Ma. I'm on my Mia. <laughs> I've been waiting a long time for this. It's delicious. Can All you right. see me? <laughs> no, we can't, we can't see you. We can't see you, Ma. We can't see you. It's good. You gotta taste the, you gotta taste the crust though. Taste the crust. So for those who are watching right now, what? Isaiah is having his family what taste the you pizza. Huh? What's wrong with you? What you? <laughs> it's more pizza downstairs. Ma, I'm, from, I'm gonna get you more pizza, mom. <laughs> just Isaiah, just don't tell her that you ordered it from DiGiorno. That you went to the store and bought the Zerdos. Just don't tell her the oh, truth. Oh, man. Oh, man. All right. So, are you, are you free to get back on camera? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, come, on, on. Come, yeah come on back on the camera. I will finish talking about DSJ, and then we'll wrap it up. Yes, sir. Then we'll wrap it up. Yeah, so, you know, again, uh, with DSJ, man, I think, um, like, I, you know, like I said, I was looking at the video to see um, just to see his development, see if he actually made a development. Clearly, he's got to do it when we get in the game. He's got to do it when they get in the game. Um, but this is a big year. Same. This is a big year for DSJ. If DSJ, we talked about it the other day on NBK podcast, me, Eru, uh, Raw Hebrew. If DSJ, I mean, D and and I talked about it with Legion and Knicks podcast. This could be. This could be the year where DSJ, where it's like, yo, you either make it in the league or you're going to be in Australia or or China. Some heat. So I'm not even joking when he's I'm so serious. He has to think like that. He's got to think like that right now. Because Sim, the way he's projecting right now, man, and I don't want to see the Sim. You know, I'm not the biggest fan of him, but I don't want to see him not. I don't want to see him not fail. I mean, not succeed. Right. I want him to, if, if we can get him to, to to play like he should play, I mean the Knicks will be on a whole nother level. We said it last year, Sim, that uh DSJ would be an X Factor if he got it together. Mm -hmm. And he can still be that X Factor. He you know, I think a lot listen again, right? I never lost God, you know, I, I didn't lose my mother. I haven't lost my mother, I haven't lost my father. So I don't know that pain that he went through last year. Right. You know what I'm saying? So Cause you know, at the end of the day, he's a kid, Sim. Yeah. What twenty-two year old? What what twenty-two year old wants to lose his mother? Right. So, at, in um, well, no, that was, that was Julius Randle. He lost his grandmother. Um, but he lost uh, it's his a mother. little bit different. It's still close to you. Still close to you. A little bit different, yeah, but, but it's, it's still it's, very it's close. It's not your mama, though. You no, know, it's, it's not, not your, your, your mom. mom. It's not your mother, but it, you know, it's still close. So still you know close. what I'm saying? So. So I'm hoping for a good bounce back year for him. Mm -hmm. I think this year he'll be a lot more focused. And he and I think he understands. Listen, if we know it, then he knows it. Right. <laughs> you know what right. I'm saying? Right. If, right. If he knows that this is his chance where he's like, okay, it's either this or I do the typical thing with a guy like him. They bounce around one team, two teams maybe, and then next thing you know, he's in China. He kills it, gets a one year deal. <laughs> Then you know he's like, oh well, he's not the China version of himself. And then he goes back to the a different country. You know, you know, you we so we've seen this so many times. Yeah. Because you know what's yeah. what's he's about to go through it. Josh Jackson's about to go through it. This is his third or fourth team. Josh, after a while, did, didn't he, he just get signed? He just got. I think he just got traded because he was on the Grizzlies. I think he's on a Sacramento Kings or something like that. He's I think, somewhere. I, I think he got signed. I th I thought he signed a contract with oh, somebody. Oh no, he's in he's in Detroit. He's in Detroit, Sam. Yeah, 
Yeah, I think it was. I think it was Detroit. But I mean, but what I'm saying about you know Dennis Smith Jr. You know, this is clearly a year that he's got to prove that he can be an NBA a contributor on on an NBA team, right? Uh, so he's got to, you know, he's got to, you know, he's got to come with it. He can't, he can't, he can't play games this season. This is a big season for Dennis Smith Jr. Um, I'm rooting for him. I'm rooting for him. You know, I. Listen, bet- with, between the point guards that we have on the team right now, Frank Nilakina, Alfred Payton, uh, Austin Rivers, he's the only one that has that kind of explosiveness. The only one. Not, it's not even close. Right? There's not one other guy that has that kind of explosiveness. That could mean a lot for him because he's there's not a – no one can duplicate it. None of our other guards can duplicate it. So that means he might get a little. He's gonna get a chance. Bishop M, you're right. He lost his mom for the second time. Oh, Talking about Dennis yeah. Smith Jr. Yeah, because that's yeah. You know, uh, so he's gonna get the chance. We'll see if he can capitalize on that chance. I'm hoping that he can. You know, if it, if not with the Knicks somewhere, you know, you like to see the young guys go ahead and succeed, uh, and be you know do what they can do in the league. Uh, what I like about it, you know, this video is the first video that we've seen of him, you know, playing basketball, doing any kind of workouts or anything like that. Um, and I don't even know if he took it out, you know, one of his buddies, one of his buddies, Ka uh, Molly World. You know, I think he's a rapper or something like that from, from his area, you know, put it out. Um But for the most part, throughout the summer, he's been kind of quiet, working five days a week with my uh, Mahmoud Abdul Rauf. Uh, he looks slimmer. Looking at the video, he looks a lot slimmer. You know that can be big for him when it comes to playing defense. You know, I'm looking at the shot. I still see when he pulls up, his shoulders kind of fade back a little bit. But there's that hitch isn't there, and he's not shooting on the way down. Which is big. He's shooting, you know, he, he's kind of, he's at the peak of his shot when he's actually shooting that jump shot. So, you know, while there's still some work to go, it, it looks better. It looks a lot better. We'll see if he can apply it during the game. You know, so, um, you know, big shout out to Dennis Smith Jr., man, for working on his game. Hopefully he's going to be better when he gets, when he gets here because he can be a huge a huge, huge, huge X factor for this team. He can be a huge X factor because that's the one thing that the Knicks are looking for. You know, from what we understand, we always hear that they're looking for a scoring point guard, not really a distributor. Uh, you know, he's a scoring point guard, and but you still got distributors on the team in Alfred Payton and, and Frank Nilakina if you need distributors. And then you got Austin Rivers, who's kind of an off guard, not really a distributor. Now, I don't know if Frank Nilakina is a full-on distributor either. You know, uh, he's more the guy that's going to make sure the ball swings to the other side. Alfred Payton is probably, not probably, he's the best distributor on the team. You know, uh, so, you know, we'll see what happens with DSJ. Either way, whatever the Knicks do this year, a lot's going to, you know, everyone's talking about, everybody is talking about, uh, you know, the, the stopgap guys that we signed. Everyone's talking about, um, you know, the rookies. But these young guys we got, Frank Nilakina, Kevin Knox, Dennis Smith Jr., R.J. Barrett, Mitchell Robinson, their, develop, you know, their development is going to be essential to what the Knicks do this season. Would you agree with that, Isaiah? Yes, sir. It's going to be essential to whatever the Knicks do this season. You know, uh, because I think people discount when they look at, you know, Vegas got the Knicks only winning 22 games or something crazy. I think everyone discounts that these guys, at least two of these guys are going to take steps forward. Yes. At least two of them. R.J. Barrett, I'm pretty positive, is going to take a step forward. And then one other player. Um, I, I, I know we got a couple weeks. I know we got a couple. We pretty much got a month to talk about, you know, what we project these guys to be. But I'm telling you right now, Sim, 26 
and five for RJ. 26? No, 20. Oh, 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 okay, okay, okay. 20, 20 points, six rebounds, five assists. Or 20 yes. points, five assists, six rebounds. No, you're going to do – actually, you know what? He, he he averaged like seven rebounds. But you know what? He's going to be scoring more, so – I'm gonna go 26 nah, to five. Uh, let me see. Let me see what 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 he averaged with the rebounds last year. He was a strong. He was a strong rebounder. That, he like was, he was a strong rebounder. He averaged five rebounds last year. Two point six assists. You know what? He can get. He can give me. He can give me seven. I'm, he can give me seven rebounds. If if RJ if RJ improves his free throw shooting, adds a couple of percentage points to that jump shot, twenty points easy. Easy, easy. Twenty points, easy. But so, you know what? That's another video. Listen, we got a month until the season starts, so we we can talk about the projections for the guys in a different video. Because I know we got a whole bunch of videos that's coming up. So yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. right, exactly. But you know, I mean, still, the the people discount that these guys are going to take steps forward, and that means that they're going to be better players, right? Better players, and so, so you know we'll see. So you know what's so funny, something that I, I keep reading about, right? And this is just this is how you know it just makes hate. Lamelo Ball, third pick, right? Third pick. People always got him projected superstar, like superstar, star, star. Every time I hear about RJ, right? They're like, eh, yeah, he's yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. He was okay. He's gonna be a, he's gonna he's gonna be an okay player. I'm like, yo, I'm like, y'all do act like, like I didn't have him projected before Zion blew up. To be right. the projected number one pick, right? You know what I'm saying, and I'm like, first of all, it's so crazy. This how some we could go in this rant about how they just discredit the Knicks just because somebody's on the Knicks. They're like, Sim, I guarantee you, right? I guarantee you, if this would, if Obi Toppin would have went anywhere but the Knicks, everybody would have had him penciled in as a rookie of the year. Everybody been like, yo, he's the he's the Naismith player. He's literally. Was was ranked the best player in the country, college player. They literally gave him the award for best college player. But you know, it's, it's a sim, so it's like, yeah, you know, you, you know, it yeah. was good, it was good. Man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, no. well, see, you know, listen, we're gonna see what the Knicks do when it comes to Nicholas Batum. Um, Hopefully, Dennis Smith Jr. is going to improve, you know, come into the season improved and improved player. Um, Jump shot fixed. It'll mean a lot when it comes to the Knicks. And, you know, all these people talking about the Knicks, you know, I get it. You know, we've been trashed for a long time and all of that kind of stuff. Um, But you know what? So so the expectations are not there. But. These young guys are going to get better. So that, that's all I'm going to say with them. That's the last time I'm going to say it. These young guys are going to get better. And it, the Knicks could be a lot different than what most people think, I believe. I'm not saying they're going to make so, the playoffs, but I think they can contend for that 10th spot. I think they can do that. They did it last year. Well, they didn't contend for it. Last year, i say it again, they were a game and a half behind Charlotte when the season ended. Right, Charlotte was in that temp spot last year. The Knicks were a game and a half. If they can get to that temp spot, it could be a perfect position for them because they can f- still fight for a playoff spot but keep their draft position. Yes. And you know what's so funny, though? Some to me, and this is just, again, right? We have time to talk about it on a different show, but it's just the media, right? It just kills me, right? It's like, I don't understand what the media wants us to do. You always say, LOL, same old Knicks. So, like, do you want us to stay the same or do you want us to be forward or do you want us to push forward? Because it's crazy where, like, you know, the Knicks had a good – I would say the Knicks had a good offseason. I won't say it's great. It's a good offseason. Yeah, it was okay. Yeah, and, it was good. Yeah. And it's like, you know, people just – it's like the same <laughs> – like, you know, you get – you get, I mean, I get the Mark Bermans. I, I get all those guys and stuff that they have to make headlines. But it's like – you just hear this constant that is always the LOL Knicks. But I'm like, yo – we gotta move somewhere. We gotta move. We gotta move forward. Like, right. what are you gonna? So I can't wait for us to be good, just to see what LOL Nick stuff they're gonna come up with. Right. You know what I'm saying? They, they're gonna come up with the most. They're gonna be like, well, you know, uh, James Dolan didn't tie his sneakers, so he, he, you know, he he gonna. It's, it's gonna be some stupid stuff. 
Nah, no doubt about that, man. Um, well, you know, I don't know. You know, it's always like that with the New York Knicks. It's, it, it, you know, you know how it is. It's always that way. Always that way. So, well, you know, not I. we can't expect anything to change. You know what I'm saying? But um, I'm just hoping that we see a step forward for these guys, which I expect we will. There'll be a step forward. Uh, and then, of course, you got Obi Toppin. You know, the addition of Obi Toppin is going to, you know, help make the guys better, you know, the, the team better. You know, I, I don't understand the projection of just 22 wins. We had 21 wins last season, and we incrementally upgraded the roster. Are they saying that other teams got that much better? Uh, maybe that's what they're saying. We incrementally upgraded the roster. We had 21 wins last season, and we didn't get to finish the season, right? You still had... I don't know how many games left. I forgot, you know, 20 games left or something like that, right? We easily could have been at 28, 29 wins. Uh, and that's not to say that that's anything that's impressive. Just saying this year, I think we can take a step and get and win 30-something games this year. I think we can. I think we can take that step. I don't think we're going to be at 22. If we are, we are. I don't think so. I think we'll be better than that. But anyway, I'm out, Isaiah. Man, Sam, I was gonna say I'll let you go eat your pizza, but you ate it already. <laughs> Listen, man. Ah, uh, yeah, I did. I turned that thing up. Oh, and um, big shout out to uh Simmons Singh for the super chat as well. Appreciate you, my bro. I appreciate you. And so is that Simia? Simma Singh. Simma Singh. Ah, uh, Simma Singh. It's not Simia. It's Simma Singh. Simma Singh. Yes, Simma Singh. Simma Singh. Um, listen, man, I just want to say, man, thanks for sticking with me, guys. I appreciate it. This one came out pretty good. We, got a long, we still got a long way to go. We got to do some more work. I'm not listening. I listen to all the feedback, all the comments. I appreciate it. Um, I Thank you, guys, man. Thank you, Sim. Thank everybody for watching. And I hope, you know, you can cook with you. You know, my whole purpose of this, Sim, you know, I just want everybody to cook with their loved ones. Cook with the friends, cook with the family. No, just something quick and easy. You know, something like you know, I don't want to give you guys souffle and all that, you know, all the crazy stuff. And if you guys want it, let me know. We can do yeah. it. But you know, right. But um oh, listen, you, you know, you know what? Actually, you know what? I do need to take that back. I do need to take that back. I forgot. We're not playing 82 games. We're playing 72 games. So I do got I gotta shave 10, 10 games off of there. So maybe not. So maybe I'm looking at 28 wins, 20, 28 wins or something like that. I forgot we got to shave, you know, we got to oh, shave yeah, games I keep off. Forgetting that. I'm, think, I'm thinking about 82 games. So that's why I said, you know, somewhere around 30, you know, 30 to 35 wins. I got to shave it off. I got to shave off. So, you know, I'm going to take about seven wins off of there. So I'm going to say, okay, 27, 28. All right. So I guess we're close to that 22 then. Close to that 22. I, for, I, I keep forgetting about that. So, yeah, we're close to that 22. 27, 28, though, I think. But, if we can right. get 30, Sim, I'll be happy with that. Yeah. But I, I but it's going to be... 30 it, might get to... Yeah, it might be a little bit tougher. I keep forgetting we're only playing 72 games, so... I think yeah. I think we're playing a lot of more conference games. So, yeah, yeah. Um, but anyway, man, it was a good yeah. one. It was a good show. You see, you got, yeah. you got some compliments <laughs> in the chat. You know what I'm saying? Your pizza look good. That. You know? So... I try. Ladies and gentlemen, we appreciate you. Oh, Sim. Yeah. I just want to say one more thing. Listen, for these for the next comments, right? For the next comment, I don't think we're gonna, you know, we're gonna have a lot of leftover food this week. So, you know, maybe we might do a little quick, not a quick hiatus, but you know, we might do a little something. Actually, you know what we're gonna do that because we're gonna be eating leftovers for like three days straight. So on Monday, what I'm gonna do, I want everybody on this video, if there's a food that you want me to cook. Cause I don't, I'm not doing, I'm not, I, whoever food me and Sim pick, we're going to shout you out. And maybe if this is part of Sim, we get you on the show. If you, if you want to get you on the show and you can help me guide you, guide me through cooking what you want me to cook for you. Okay. That sounds cool. That sounds cool. And then he's going to freeze it and send it to you. Psych. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you don't have somebody scared. But no, so everybody, if, if you guys get a chance today, of course, like it, 
subscribe. And if there's a meal you want me to cook, put it in the comments and, you know, get you in the comments and get in contact with you. Give me the list of ingredients, blah, 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 blah. You know, we do all that, et cetera. And then if you want to be part of the show, we'll get you on the show. You can help me guide you through what you want me to cook and we can get it popping. I want to, I want to definitely do something with y'all. So let me know what you guys want in the, in the, in the comments. I'll cook it. We're going to have some fun. All right. That's what, that's it. Then no doubt. Yeah. Yeah. Quattro 36 and 36 games is 500. So yeah, that's why I got to back off of that. Dang, that is, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Because it's, it's 36 games is 500. Cause it's 72, 72, 72 games. So yeah, 36 games is 500. Dang. Right. So I mean, yeah, maybe it is 22 wins then. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it is 22 wins oh man That's maybe funny, it is man. 22 wins I don't know we'll see but, uh, I think they yes, I still sir. think they can get more than 22 I, Sam, you know what I, I believe since it's 72 I think we can get 27-28 yeah 27-28 somewhere around there if we, get, if we can get 21 with that squad last year we, we could do something I could deal with I mean yeah I mean playing 60 something games last year we did 21, you know, so if you, you know, and the Knicks were 500 towards from March, February and March, they played 500 basketball. Well, can they do it again? We'll see. I don't know, but all right, we'll see. Well, you know what? I ain't even, I'm, I'm going to just save my prediction until I see what happens in training camp. All right. I'm going to just save my prediction for then. When I see what happens in training camp, we'll do some more. But anyway, I'm out of here, ladies and gentlemen. Appreciate you guys' time. Uh, keep following along with this show because you guys are going to see it's going to continue to get better and better and the graphical interface is going to get and look better the camera angles all of that it's going to be dope man somebody said make possum stew <laughs> <laughs> we out of here ladies and gentlemen peace appreciate your yes, time sir. have a happy 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 holidays to you yes peace. happy Thanksgiving everybody shout out to the indigenous people we love you what